non-locality and actionable distance appear okay, globally and distantly, etc. Okay. So, and another thing is what is known as entanglement, because the power is not reduced. For example, the entanglement is the foundation of Bell's theorem uh, experiments. Uh, essentially, even if you separate, um, suppose I have a coin, something like this. And this coin, I slice it and give one to him and give one to him. He doesn't know which is head and which is tail. But the relationship of head and tail remains regardless of how far those two apart. Okay. Same thing happens at the uh, you know, um, atomic level. That is what is entangled. And then not only that, you have a mathematical description in terms of the wave equation. You see, what has happened to the wave equation? It has nothing to do with waves. It becomes a measure of uh, various other things like entanglement, probability, and all that. Hmm? So, next one. Fundamental problem, no description. The equations of quantum mechanics theory would be just pure mathematics that would have no physical meaning at all. Uh, I, will, I will show that. Example, if a system is in a state described by a normalized wave function psi, the average value of the observer corresponding to A is given by uh, the expectation value equal to integral over the space, etc., etc. This is not physics. What do you say in uh, relativity? You say the inertial frames, you know, lots of physics are the same in all inertial frames. And then you say the velocity of light is constant and does not depend upon the velocity of the source. But even they are, to some extent, they are mathematical constraints. Could be. But the mathematics is, is derivable from it. You see, they are existential statements. Okay? They talk about the existence of inertial frames and what is the property and all. But still, they are like using words, right? I mean, like, I would say light. Has, but what is light, right? I mean, then it comes back to still you have to like light. No, but the point sense. is, light has existence independent of our experiment. Well, it's not so obvious to me at least because what? I, I mean, at least what I observe is through my senses. No, no, you mean to say that if you don't observe light, will light will disappear? I don't know, but I no, no, no. I, I, I guarantee it will still be there because <laughs> he can observe it, and he will come up with exactly the same light. No, but. I, I, it, that's, your, that's your philosophy, right? But it's not necessarily like... No, no, then essentially... I don't have to take that stand, right? No, no, you don't. But what I'm saying is, there is... A, the, it is possible to define, of, you know, a real uh, physical quantities objectively. Second, I do not no, have it, to... Yeah. For example, how would you define this before uh, this uh, mathematics was invented? Oh, yeah, this is a lost cause. I'm not talking about uh -huh. this. This we cannot do, but yeah, the light... Going back to that, right? I could like I could have a philosophy position. I'm not saying that this is my position, but I could say nothing. So here is a here is a me philosophy, right? It says that the whole world is just related to what I observe through my senses, mm -hmm. and everything else that just constructs the, on my imagination. Uh, that is the cut, uh, That is what the cut said. Yeah, the cut. That's the cut is you know. Uh, the yeah, cut. exactly. Uh -huh. so I, I exist say. because I observe. I mean because I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, so. Yeah, I think uh, that goes into the consciousness which you said is out of scope for this lecture. Yeah, that has to but be that, separate. But I mean, we have to like, I mean, at some point this goes there, right? Because even light is something which... We call it light, but the, uh, the cause and effect of light exists whether we exist or not. You mean the universe was created, the radiation and all that, you know, uh, long before humans came on the planet. Yeah. Even the quantum effect, right? I mean, that is Einstein's argument also. Even the uh, quantum physics, we invented quantum physics. Be just because we cannot describe it objectively doesn't mean there is no objectivity. Yes. And that's that, a limited, that's, that's, that's that what we answer that we would all like, but. Yeah, the thing is, at this time, we, we can't do it. Yeah. But the thing is, we can't refute it either. Because some people say Bell's experiment, I mean, refuted answer. No. Exactly. It refuted non locality. I mean, it refuted locality. That means the laws of physics at the quantum level are different from, I mean, the behavior at the quantum level is different from, and cannot be described uh, by the laws that we formulate uh, in what I have called the coherent world or what you might call the classical world. I don't like the word classical because some people don't regard uh, relativity also as classical. Okay. Excellent. How does the string theory fit into all this? I don't, I think this, I, my own feeling is the problem is so fundamental, I don't think it will be 
solved by some clever mathematics. Okay. For example, when I got into it, I, you know, um, uh, as I was mentioning to Giri, I wanted to come to MIT for my graduate work because I was a famous uh, teacher of uh, called Casey Masani, uh, who was assistant to Norbert Wiener. Wiener, of course, is one of the big names at MIT. So it was one of the who really made MIT one of the world renowned institution. But then he moved to India, and that's why I went to India. But of course, he left India and I went to Pittsburgh when I went there. Maybe he was trying to escape me, but whatever. <laughs> uh, whatever, the thing is, at that time, we were looking at uh, Feynman path integrals. We thought that was going to, but we didn't worry about these questions. Most of us, when we are students, don't think of these things. Okay. So, <coughs> um, so, at least it gives us different ways of calculation. Okay, just as matrix and uh, you know you can calculate the same things using. So string theory doesn't give us any experiments we can perform. So we have to have prediction. My feeling now is I can explain some of the crucial experiments on the basis of this um, Madhva's uh, approach. Because I can assume there is no geometric existence. Uh, there is no such thing as geometry in the incoherent of the quantum world. So you can't talk about motion, velocity, or anything. So the question of velocity of light doesn't arise. Therefore, non-locality doesn't arise, because there is no such thing as velocity. But, uh, so we are really chasing the wrong, uh, you know, we are going up the wrong trail. Uh, so uh, that way. But the thing is, we should also be able to make some prediction that can be experimentally verified, uh, which cannot be done. Uh, the way things are now. Okay, next one, please. Okay. So, quantum postulates of relativity are simple and metaphysical. Okay, quite, we, we already discussed that. Contain no physics, but only mathematical formulations for computation. Have a strongly geometric flavor, Hilbert space, eigenvalues, etc. All these are geometric. Uh, but uh, uh, these probably are not the correct way of describing it. We perceive the world through geometry. For us, it's the most fundamental. Space is the most fundamental part of concept. But that may not apply at the quantum level, because distance is no varying. Okay. This is strange in the geometry-less quantum world. So that seems to be a first problem. Next one, please. Contradictory words. Experiments and observations take place in the coherent world. That is, uh, in the words of Mark Quantum phenomena uh, take place in an incoherent world whose real nature can only be indirectly. Martha wants to understand it, but Bohr, Heisenberg, etc., deny its existence. Uh, next, please. So, physical divergence, the coherent world is described by space type geometry, and the velocity of light sets a limit. The incoherent world is unreal and violates locality, and others both entanglement and action into distance. Yeah, but what is incoherent world today could be a coherent world tomorrow. As could as be, as could be. We hope so. Someday we may be. That's the whole uh, program. We so want so to make it coherent. May not be a truly, it may just be a matter of reference. Coherent no, no. Coherent. At this time, yeah. yeah. The thing is, the thing is, the rules of coherent world do not apply to incoherent world. That is our problem. That's same why I'm calling it incoherent. Same as rules of duality do not apply to non-duality. Correct. Duality, incoherence is consequence of duality. The thing is, if we can come up with a theory which can describe which Einstein, which so far has not happened, okay? That was the goal of the unified field theory and you know, string theory, M theory, and all that. My own feeling is we have to understand, uh, you know, uh, go from the fundamentals and simply fitting clever mathematics is not going to do it. Essentially, uh, quantum mechanics is sort of uh, lives between two worlds because we cannot even describe quantum physics from fundamentals. We need concepts from classical physics. Okay, we cannot derive it from fundamentals. That's the problem. From fundamental postulates, you cannot derive. It. I mean, if anyone has seen a derivation of E equals M C square, it is so brief, brief and so beautifully done. We don't have such derivation. Essentially, what we have is a battery of mathematical tools and techniques 
which accumulated in our explanation of experimental results. I mean, some, some are very important, like the, you know, uh, like the Stern-Gerlach experiment about the spin, you know, the, and all the things. Okay? Um, so this is what is, I'm not saying quantum mechanics is wrong. Please understand. Anything we want to do, we can do it. But from a, a scientific or a descriptive point of view, it is unsatisfying. That's that is the unified theory. Unified theory, uh, essentially, you see, unified theory, I believe the scope is somewhat uh, you know, more narrow. They want to combine gravity with quantum theory. They have tried to come up with graviton and all the field equations and all that. Uh, but again, uh, the, there are some very, very clever people working, but the point is if gra the whole idea of geometry breaks down at the quantum level. I don't know how you would describe the combined gravity with uh, this thing. Because gravity is geometry. We have to come up with some other way of describing geometry, gravity, then uh, if Maybe if they succeed at that, maybe that will also shed some light on that. Oh, of course it will. Of course it will. Of course it will. But first, we should uh, describe it independently. I think next one. So that's what he meant when he said it's incomplete, not wrong. <coughs> Bell's theorem, that's is the most important in the, it gave a tool for experimentally testing different localities by the, people have come up with ideas, David Bohm, he also looked, tried to look at Vedanta, but he went after, you know, uh, Jito Krishnamurti, who's not a Vedantist, he was a theosophist. Hmm? He was a follower of, uh, you know, he was created by Annie Besant and those people, he knew nothing about uh, uh, Vedanta. Hmm? All experimental tests so far confirm that locality is by Showing instantaneous action in the distance. Most the students of science don't know this. <coughs> because uh, we treat them separately and we show them how to solve equations. See, one of the things that has happened is wave equation. We have studied for so long. So we have created textbook and other problems which we know how to solve using the, the, in the wave equation. You know, boundary, step boundary, this boundary, that boundary, and all that. But physically, so the fundamental problem remains. Okay, next, please. So resolving. Okay, uh, one way of resolving Bell's theorem paradox is to say no geometry, no distance, no motion, hence there is no violation. You see, that's what happened with the Michelson Morty experiment. People are all, gave all sorts of explanations. Finally, Einstein, the, the, the relativity, uh, said, look, we don't need the ether. It was, it was supposed to measure velocity of light through ether. There is no ether. And then after that, they said the velocity of light is the same in all directions, independent of the source. Therefore, uh, the result is always zero. So that was different from what people thought. It took 20, more than 25 years to come to that conclusion. <coughs> Based on this, and you want to test it. That is important. We need new results. Next one, please. Three possibilities, no reality beyond the observer and the experiment. This is debatable. I just thought, okay, that's the classical. There is objective reality, but quantum theory is incomplete. That's Einstein. The dual world, but the relationship is unknown. That is Shankara's position at this time. Mm -hmm. Understand the relationship between coherent and incoherent world. That is Madhva's position. But essentially, this, they, all of them are asking the same question. That is what I think.